All right, guys, we're going to have an Easter edition of the Reefing Report. So go grab your friends, your family, and anybody else online that wants to come and listen and turn up the sound, turn up the bass, because this is a nice, sweet jam from Timothy Infinite. It's called Trumpet Man. Hello, hello, and welcome to another edition of the Reefing Report here on Easter Sunday with me, Terrence, and Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Inc. This is the special edition Easter Report <laughs> for the first time ever on YouTube in live broadcast, any broadcast. Call. I'm not wearing a t shirt. It's popping the call. But it's Easter. It's pop. Let's see. You want <laughs> He's about popping as pop the call. As good as get. And I've got, my, uh, Yo. I've got my nice Hawaiian flower shirt on. You know, it's very spring like. Uh, chrysanthemums, which are not really spring-like flowers, I don't think. But, but anyway, uh, definitely rocking it Easter time, having a good time here. Already did all the family stuff. I'm sure you did, Mark. Rocking the drink here, you know, and uh, ready to talk some some reef talk. Yeah, water, just water for you. Yeah, or vodka. <laughs> no, not nope. today. Not today. No, nope. did have a. I'm some kind of mixed contraption New Orleans this week. It was quite good. Good time down there helping out the Son of a Saint projects and Infinity Aquariums. I saw that. Doing a little. Yeah, it was fun to be uh, helping out on a project. Didn't get paid for it, volunteered everything, but it was nice to like show up and they like, we need you to build a mixing station. I'm like, great. I don't have to worry about anything else. All the logistics, client interactions, none of it. It was like PVC shears, glue, go to town. Yeah, that was all pro bono, right? Yep, absolutely, hundred percent. It was, uh, it was cool though. Like we had some guys come over, younger guys in the business, but very hungry, so they wanted to learn. Uh, we all learned from each other. You know, we would kind of had some fun times walking up to people, and it's like, well, why are you doing it that way? Like we could just come up and say that, and you didn't have to like sugarcoat anything. We'd challenge each other for two days. Like, well, okay, that's well, good because sometimes you guys get a little, you know, weird in, in the ways that you do things. Like, uh, it's my way, uh, don't you know? There's a reason I do. Well. This. It, there's definitely some of that. I was like, especially with plumbing. using that. Especially oh with yeah. Plumbing. Oh. But uh, that was part of the fun. So but was, I will say, you good. know, I did, I did, I, you know, to keep it a little real, I did give you a little chiding because I saw like an ASM skimmer, and you know, I'm not, nothing against ASM skimmers. I've had one, right? They use an ungodly amount of power. They work, okay. But still, it looked to me like, uh, yeah, 2003 was calling. <laughs> Hey, that was one of those. I didn't see the design. I was just there to 
do whatever they told me. I was, they're like, this works for them. They clearly have it down. If you look at what else they've done, I was like, all right, this is what we got. And, uh, we'll roll. <clears throat> well, I, I can't wait to see it, uh, up and running. It was a fish only, right? Insert tank, I think. Fish, fish only insert tank. Mm-hmm. Yep. It'd be down there in new Orleans. So probably filled up, uh, Next month, I think the big unveiling is for the opening of the building was in June. It was an old ice house from the early 1900s. So it was really cool that the, they were telling us that, yeah, no, like (laughs) Valley Construction, they had these beams. I got that. (laughs) The beams and the rafters in the ceiling were apparently like 40 foot long pieces of pine called hard pine. And there's like Uh one in the center of the tree. And that was the whole ceiling. It was how they used to do it. Yeah. Yeah. That board is 40 feet long. You're like, wow, that's incredible. Yep, the special curing, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, well, I didn't have that exciting of a week. I was uh, editing video from various things, so uh, <laughs> that's what I was busy doing and learning some new techniques and learning some new things and uh, pushed out a video from Global Pet Expo out there uh, that you guys can find out on Real Reefing channel out there on uh, on YouTube. And uh, maybe we'll talk a little bit about the salt uh, that I saw there from uh, Dr. Tim's, and so that's out on video, but we might talk about it today. Another salt. Yeah, I know. Because that's what we need. Yes. Another one. Yes. And uh, yeah. <laughs> Another one. <laughs> Another one. Well, speaking of that, you, you talked about video, Jake or Terrence. So Jake wants to know what happened with the Wise Camera Apex integration you talked oh, yeah. about years ago. Yeah. So uh, I still use the Wise Cameras quite a bit, and they've been doing some advances. So uh, I might get into the weeds, at least for. 90 seconds here uh, to answer this. When you use a camera, the reason why most of the cameras don't work with an Apex, for instance, is because most cameras actually set up a link through uh, kind of a backdoor way into your network so it can find your phone and your phone finds your camera when you're outside your home network, right? Um, won't get into the nitty gritty of exactly how that's done, but it, it has to be done within their app in order to do that. And because of that, and because of security, it makes it very hard to capture that inside another application. Um, on, t- on top of that, many of the, um, you know, many of the uh, cameras out there do not offer another way to, uh, to access the video other than through their gateway, so to speak, right? And so that's also a problem. But some cameras, uh, like, the, um, uh, like the Nest Cam, actually allow you to access their cloud uh, access to the camera so theirs actually goes up to the cloud and back down as opposed to just trying to go straight across to your phone and then there are other cameras where you can actually do like post put your own hole through the your own firewall and access them well wise uses the first methodology which makes it super difficult to do um, although not completely undoable but they just opened up so that it can now be accessed directly uh, which does make it available to be used in other applications which is kind of nice. So now I can actually bring in a wise cam into this live stream that's on my, you know, on my tank. So that does make it now available to be used with your, uh, you know, with your Apex. You're still going to have to do all that tricky stuff, though, you know, with port forwarding and all of that. All of that said, there's still yet another way to do it that I'm still investigating, and uh, it still might be possible. Uh, so you just have to kind of stay tuned on that one, but it uh, it is it is tricky, and it does require some tricky stuff. But there you go. I'd love to see the wise there stuff work across the board uh, with the uh, Apex and integrate into the Apex, and uh, and maybe have a more you know aquarium friendly access to the wise cameras because they're great. Uh-huh. There you go. Here's my long uh, 120 second spiel. There you go. Well, we, uh, let's give a quick shout out to Reef Girl, who's back on the stream with a quick question before we roll into this stuff. Well, and by the way, about- uh, yeah, by the way, let me just, uh, say because, uh, Mark pronounced it correctly last time, she did become, uh, a patron and uh, signed up on Patreon. So you guys out there, if you want to support the channel, there is a private channel on Facebook that you can all access and access, uh, have access to Mark and I and uh you know help you out or other things as well as supporting the channel which does cost money uh <laughs> it is not free for all the software and everything else that we do so we do thank people that are uh, our patrons like reef girl and others so that's uh, very much appreciated so she has Terrence, a 
you gotta Question. get it get it right girl you yes. girl, girl. Okay. not girl girl got a girl in there okay so let's see here okay this is the question those inserts are beautiful does anyone ever talk about how they look six weeks in? Like, do they get covered with algae? I'm going to let Mark answer that. But before he does, another plug for my channel at Real Reefing. Because as I was going across the country, Derek Picker at Reef Automation has a fish-only tank as well. And he actually gets it cleaned um, about every month to six weeks. So go, Mark, on your thoughts on that. They, and in a way, they're just like live rock. They're a surface in an aquarium and stuff will grow on them. Algae will grow on them. You, in a way, have the privilege of getting there with a the brush and scrubbing them. You know, you can scrub them hard and knock that stuff off. And it's not so much six weeks, but over years, depending on how good of a quality insert that it is, it can start to lose color. Um, but it's just like, I mean, our rocks, we want them to get colored up and look purple and want biofilm on it. The inserts, you want it to look pristine. Uh, I tell people it's like the difference between maintaining a garden and maintaining a green at a golf course. Golf course, there's like one little blade of grass that's too long on the putting green. You'll be like, you can see it, like your eyes go right to it. In a garden, like you want your tomatoes overgrown and your turnips sticking out of the ground. Like you want that, that it's a look, it's an overgrown look. So it's the difference between the two. One, the rinsers, you really have to stay on top of cleaning them. Even mm -hmm. if you maintain good water parameters, you still got to scrub them because they're going to tell on you as soon as they don't look pristine. Now, one of the things is, is that you can maintain water parameters that will have less things growing on them than you do in a reef tank, right? So you can keep your parameters in such a way and lighting, et cetera, such that it's not as likely to have as much algae, but they're going to get algae and, uh, you know, it, it, they're never going to look as good as the first day you put them in. Uh, and you're going to have to be somewhat satisfied with that. But, you know, some fish only tanks, man, I, I'm telling you, the one that Derek had, some of the fish that he had in there and everything are just amazing fish so there you go there you go speaking of fish let's we're talking fish terrence okay. let's roll right into All into right. the fish stories of the week we talked about video in fish two abhorrent fish stories for the week now if you don't know what abhorrent means uh it's no, like it's not a, abhorrent it's aberrant is abhorrent, the actual aberrant. It, it's aberrant otherwise it sounds aberrant. like abhorrent <laughs> which maybe for me they are so let's talk about it <laughs> <laughs> so you've seen koi tangs, piebald tangs. That's what these fish look like. It's like a mixture of the two colors that are vastly different than normal. So there was, there's a photo that was a, um, well, famously there's the know, worldwide corals, Casper tang, right? That a lot of people have heard of or know about or whatever. Um, and so, you know, when you get, you know, an abnormality in nature, and then they go catch these things, they become reef keeping news. And here's one, it's a Moorish idol, which, so if you don't know, I mean, <laughs> the funny thing is like, I even looked at it, I was like, well, what does a normal Moorish idol look like? Because we don't really keep it in the hobby. So I didn't know, go exactly offhand. Right. So it should have a yellow st stripe in the center that's white. Yeah. It should be solid yellow. Right. And from this photo, like- Like this color right here is what the color yeah. should be should start to be a little bit with a little bit of a gradation in this area. We can pull one up in a minute. And, but it's like, this photo isn't that great. The glove is, that's white is blue. And then the back of the fish, I was like, does he have like your anemia or something or disease? Like, it's just like, I kind of get it, but I wasn't like, wow, that's so much different than normal. Yeah. Uh, so to speak. But the, uh, they did have one last year and that one, absolutely looks you know pretty cool in terms of you can really see that that gold kind of color that's up on the on the snout that would normally be kind of gradation here in the back of this fish like this one is here right you yep. see Boom. that that yellow back in there and man talk about uh i mean talk about really cool fish it's just too bad they're just difficult to keep in a you know a mixed fish tank you know that we have and it's, they're not completely impossible. I've seen some kept for years and years and years, but uh, man, look at that sweeper on that thing. It's just absolutely <laughs> gorgeous. And if you've ever dove and seen them in the wild, like I've, I've even seen them in, uh, uh, down uh, in Los Cabos out by the, the Arco out there. Um, it's just, they're just amazing to see a pair of those just zooming off, you know? It's really yeah. cool. Yeah, it's, I saw them in Hawaii last month. It was great. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But this is what you usually see, right? when it comes Boom. to some of these aberrant fish. 
And to me, that's just hideous. Okay, that is to me. What I think that is you the don't most like that hideous fish. That is ab- abhorrent. Okay, to me, that is, I I I just don't get uh, why that is a thing. I I just don't I, get it. You don't think that's cool at all? Not even the slightest. No. Wow, Not I would even totally to the have slightest. I would be all over that. That's cool. They have, you know, in birds, they have what are called piebald also, you know, uh, like cockatiels and stuff. And I'm not big on those either. I think, I just think that they're ugly, you know, so, you know. But there's, there's a difference you see. Slight, it's called degradation. That's not the right word, but slight variance to massive variance. Like right. they don't even quite know what exactly that is. They know it's some kind of acanthorus tank, but it's like, is it an orange shoulder? Is it like, what is it? It's that. Yeah, it's really color. bizarre. Like some weird genetic, you know, mix up that the thing had. I just, I just like how, um, you, you know, how daring somebody like this is to put their hand near the tail of that thing. Cause I've been nailed by one of those <laughs> and it takes a long time for them to stop bleeding. I don't know what's in their, their tail. I had one go right into my index finger and it took it like an hour to stop bleeding. <laughs> Port Wolf is your friend, Terrence. They said, is that a saltwater molly? <laughs> there you go. That's what I always tease people about. Yes. I didn't think about that. That's exactly That's a good point. It's a good point. So I was, you know, when, when we were going across the country, another video I'm working on, uh, I stopped it at, at, uh, uh, Mark Levinson's place, Milo's place. And we were talking about things and he has these pajama cardinals in there. And they're gigantic. I mean, they're like, I mean, they're like sunfish, okay, in his tank. And they're so ugly. They are so hideous looking. And I'm just like, why? He's like, oh, I've had them a long time. I'm like, oh, man. Yeah. yeah. Not a PJ fan. Nothing wrong with the fish. Just personally, I'm like, I don't know. So, yeah, you thing. think they could make a better a better photo, right? Definitely. Not to, not to well, it, I mean, what, part of it's like if, they're a collector and an exporter. They want to show this to make someone get really excited and pay fight, have people fight over buying it from them. Therefore they get a higher price. Like take a good photo, man. Yeah. RBS like, fish some effort into. Hmm. Yeah. So there you go. There's some very, I mean, the other fish, like you could try to take a bad photo and you'd still be like, Whoa, yeah. that thing is different. Yeah, definitely. You could tell this one's different and ugly. And this one definitely shows off the fish a lot better. So there you go. But Terrence doesn't want either of them. Well, I would have the, uh, I, I I would have this one for sure if I thought I could keep it in my tank and and it would live and be successful in my aquarium because uh, I like black and white fish. I just you know I like them with the stripes. I think that there's just really interesting pattern like the Mauritius, uh, uh, what are those Mauritius convict tangs or whatever they are. Those oh, look the really uh, cool. yeah, zebra tanks. Yeah, zebra yeah. tank. Yeah, those yeah, I yeah. think are just really cool because of the patterning and the and the black and white contrasting with all the color in your aquarium. Yeah, but no banded angel. You could do that with the banded angel, Terrence, just like Cyphus. Yeah, I could, but that just that uh, those don't do anything for me either, because it's just like one band of black on them. It's not like a neat pattern or anything. It just doesn't do it for me. Now, you know what does, uh, uh, Eric Cohen had some pictures out on Instagram this week of the Chiodi wrasses. He had a pair of Chiodi wrasses in the tank. Now that looks cool. That's a good looking fish. Talk about a fish that doesn't do well in captivity. I didn't say I would try to keep it. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I didn't say I it should be collected. I just said <laughs> it looks pretty darn cool. It looks cool. All right. So fish there's some fish talk for you all we are fish nerds yes i always say fish gets you into the hobby and coral gets you addicted so one of the things that's great about keeping the fish in your tank because let's face it one of the worst things to find in your tank is a, you walk into your house or wherever and on the ground in front of your tank is a crispy dried fish that jumped out yeah well Rimless yeah things. I mean, keeping a canopy, having net tops on the tank is great, but of course that ruins the look of any aquarium. So right. most people have canopies and we had a story this week about an adjustable canopy. Oh yes. Which, <laughs> which first was like, oh wow, that, why didn't we think of that? That's really cool. Oh, and then yeah. we dug into research of those article and we're like, oh. Yeah. No. So the guys from it's- Illu Magic. So these are the guys, I believe it's a, I believe it's a Taiwanese company. I'm pretty sure. That's that's distributed quite a bit in Australia, and um, I think Joe 
Caparata here in the U.S. has a distributorship for Illumagic here uh, through Unique Corals in the United States. Anyway, so they, they tried to come up with a new mounting kind of solution over your tank to put their uh, mounting bars, their RMS bars, in and make something innovative. And, uh, yeah, it's innovative. <laughs> <laughs> innovative in the wrong way. <laughs> I just look at this, and I'm like, the first thing I think about is somebody contracted a Russian to build, you know, an aquarium accessory. That's what it looks like to me. It looks like something that probably should have bullet holes on it outside Kiev or something like that. It just, it, it does not look like something elegant I want over my aquarium. You know, I hate to be they negative, but I mean, you tee it well, up like this. Or it's metal, which doesn't work around a tank. But then I was like, oh, cool. Like, the, I think they did like an image and animation like 3D animation of it going up and down. I was like, that's cool. It like you hit a button and it moves up and down. Like that's really smart. And like granted, like the legs would be in the way, but then it's like, no, you have to like manually lift the thing and then tighten down those little thumbs. Oh, and you can imagine that they're not going to bind legs. either, right? You know, left or right. You well, that's you have to hold it perfectly like square yeah, as you that's lift what I mean. it up. <laughs> that's what I mean. And either have someone help you, which of course then like you end up yelling at the person because you're like, hurry up, or you're like, no, it's too tight or something. I just don't. I, I this to me. So a lot of times, I'll, I'll take this in a more general sense. Many times I see a lot of aquarium products um, that it looks as if the people who either designed them or decide to put them together or whatever, they don't really use. They don't really have a reef tank. They, they, they're not engaged really at all in our hobby. And it happens a lot. And in this case, you know, it absolutely is a thing uh, because who would have, le you know, you, who would have a, a beautiful rimless tank like this and then stick legs like that down into them, which is clearly going to be below the water line, okay? <laughs> there is no way that those legs are not extending below the water line. And then, and then the whole thing's made out of metal. I don't care what kind of metal it is, but I, you know, it it, it 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 just says, "What are you doing?" I, I, <laughs> the first time I saw this, because I didn't see it until you posted it up, I was like, "You sure this isn't a layover from an April Fool's gag that somebody put together out there?" Um, but it's just, it's just wrong. It's just so wrong. It does. And then I love how it's got the hole on the side for you to route your wires, which is kind of a good idea. Or it's an air vent. Maybe it's one of the two, but it's just like. Well, I just don't get it uh, at all. I, I I just can think of so many better ways I could have done this myself, even if I was doing metal, you know, like with magnets or whatever. I, it's just so many better ways to accomplish this, you know, this kind of a thing. You, you, I don't know. I mean, I mean, you have to give him props for trying. Like, I haven't seen anyone else come out with some kind of adjustable canopy thing that's going to be mass produced, but it's like... This should be like concept one. Yeah, but what I always thing. tell like, people just, when they say that, you know, it's like, yeah, well, nobody else is doing it. Well, th that should be, you know, first and foremost, right? That should be your maybe. first clue. Exactly. It's like, uh, yeah, well, maybe there's a reason we don't want a giant box on top of our elegant rimless tank. I, I don't understand rimless tanks to begin with because you'd have to put a net on them, which ruins to keep your fish in, which ruins the look. Or you put a canopy on No, you on don't. Them, which... You don't have to put a net over the top of them. I disagree with you there. It depends on what fish you're going to have in there, whether or not you have to have a net over them. Um, okay. A lot so of fish that are not... Way going to come out if of you tank. have a rimless tank and you want fish that don't jump like your available source of fish goes from like whoosh, to whoosh, it certainly and it's like yeah it certainly does by the way my, my, my tank pump is off right now and i don't know why um because I, uh -oh. can, I can smell coral right now i think it's because i was messing around to slow it down so it wouldn't make so much noise because i need to get brian over here to help me with that uh and i think i turned off the pump altogether so we don't want that to happen right so i better <laughs> We need a technical difficulty sign to like cut to Terrence, so you can have one minute to run down. There we go. And be like, oh, there we go. There it I, is. Now you can see it coming on. <laughs> so, uh, what was I saying? No, oh, fish. Yeah, fish, fish, fish on a rim. So the thing with the rimless too is you can have a net over the top too and not see the net if you have a, a rimless tank on the right kind of stand in the right kind of room, the right you know kind of visibility and. Uh, and that's not a problem. So I, I, I do see, I disagree with you completely. I think they're completely elegant in the right kind of setup. Too many tanks are too low, in which case then they look totally ugly. Uh, and I do think there's plenty of fish that you can have that aren't going to jump out of the tank, you know? So my antheas don't I've jump out one. of the tank. My, you know, my Ooh. cardinals don't jump out of the tank. You know, my tangs don't jump out of the tank. 
I don't have nets over one. my tank, and I've I've got a canopy, but it's all open out the back. So, and I think I've had one or two rasses come out of the tank, which I'd expect. But then again, there you go. but then again, mine's not mine's not uh, full rimless. It does have a euro brace, so, <laughs> so I cheat a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So while we're we're on the topic of fails, uh, let's talk about the reef delete. Which uh, oh, this is a I good mean, one. You know, this is a good one. We have to say, you know, sometimes. So I think we covered this right originally, right? And I think I had oh. a dissertation on this one a little bit in the beginning, where I was like, a little bit. I was like, uh, yeah, I don't think so. Mm. You know, but um, it's definitely I, I. One of the things I'm seeing, and and kudos out there to uh, reef builders. Maybe it's just me, and I'm, I don't know. But uh, I'm definitely seeing a little more of the negative stuff out there. When I say negative, I mean not always. Basically, a lot of uh, a lot of the social media sites out there, a lot of blogs or whatever you want to call it, it's either going to be positive, slightly positive from neutral, or they won't post it, basically, right? And that's the way things have been uh, for a long time with reef builders on a lot of things. Uh, they, you know, they just won't get posted rather than, you know, you know, put somebody as they say now, as the kids say, on blast. Um, but this is uh, the reef de delete review was uh, refreshing to see. I will say, uh, it did not go in a way that I didn't already expect. Which is every device I've seen that burns up something in your tank that you don't want doesn't work the way you think it would, and they're the easiest things in the world to sell because when you have something like a pest, like an aptasia that you hate and that are in the tank and everything else, right? It's like a zit on your face, okay? <laughs> it's the easiest thing to sell is stuff to take zits off faces, right? How many different kinds of creams or devices or whatever else to get rid of that unsightly blemish? And the same thing with Aptasia in the aquarium. And so when something new comes around, especially if it sounds incredible, it's the easiest stuff to sell. And this little device is no different. It, it, it shoots UVC, right? Uh, it's basically a, a, a flashlight, right? A UVC flashlight that a little uh, lens has been put to direct the light, right, in one spot, so it doesn't flood and kill a bunch of other stuff in your tank. And uh, the end result was is that people have been trying this thing, and you have to hold the button for a long, long time until your finger basically falls off from loss of, loss of blood circulation. And then it still doesn't really, you know, work in the end. My experience exactly trying one. Oh, you tried one? It, yes. Yep. I talked Tell about me. it know, two months ago. Uh -huh. And that was th the first thing. I mean, in a way, it was like smart. It won't turn on unless it's underwater. So I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Like that, they thought that out. But then you have to hold this, the button down, which is hard to hold down. Then you have to hold it down. It says in the fine print of the instructions, they recommend over a minute, really two minutes. Oh yeah, and that was then it too. Yeah, like, right. Like you had to hold it down. It's hard to hold down. Then you can't really see what you're aiming at. Yep. Like it's really a two person job. Your buddy has to watch it because there's. It, I said it needed like a red, you know, finder laser on it, so uh -huh. you know where you're shooting. Yeah, like something that's right. alongside it. Yeah. Yep, and it's just like, I mean, great. And aim. this thing was, was like, like three hundred and fifty or four hundred bucks too, wasn't it? Yep. And I mean, I said it's great for like reef clubs, reef club buys it and people pass it around because you're going to need it for a while. But if you bought this as a single user, it'd be like, oh, yeah. So, you know, on my soapbox when it comes to these kinds of things, right? Uh, if you have a pest like green star polyps or something like that, that's in your tank or the I think stuff like like Jake has here on this picture. What is this? Anyway, it's like. That, pur that purple, not the Xenia, but the other stuff that's, I can't remember oh, what it's called. Oh, the, the chlamydia blue, for the, a tank. The, 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 yeah, exactly. The blue purple <laughs> stuff is horrible. You know, it, my, my suggestion to people with that is like, you know, scrape, scrape, pull out, pull out the rocks, pull out everything and, and just go full nuclear on it with uh, an encapsulating type product, right? But in general... If you have to be zapping stuff all the time, it, my soapbox on this is your hands are in the tank way too much, right? And it's going to cause you all kinds of problems anyway. That's why I like the laser thing if you're going to do it, right? Because you can at least do it through the glass. You know, you might blind a few fish, but, you know, um, supposedly it's worth it for your Aptasia. 
But, you know, every time you stick your hands in the tank, something's going to happen. Something's going to go in one out of 20 times. It, all of these potential things that happen that you're upsetting the balance of the water in your tank, all of these things, for a few Aptasia, when if you made smart choices about animals that you put in, that may restrict you from having certain other kinds of corals and things in your tank, right? So if you're going to have a Aptasia-eating file fish, you might not be able to have the coolest polyps of, you know, XYZ that you want to have. But he's going to keep all the Aptasia and the Majano out, and you're going to be able to have SPS because they're not going to be stinging the heck out of it. You know, if you need to have, uh, uh, you know, for Valonia, you need to have uh, emerald crabs, but not just one because one could be a stupid one. You need to have like 18 in there, you know, and have them go at it. And when they get it down a little bit, take it down to four and, you know, sell the others back. But there's ways to do this stuff where you don't have to be invading your tank. And if you do... Uh, my suggestion are the encapsulation products. And uh, again, a plug for, because I'm plugging all the time, Real Reefing. I was out in Fort Worth seeing Frank from Frank's Tanks, who has F Aptasia, which <coughs> is uh, another version of like Aptasia X, but supposed to be better. And uh, that kind of stuff works if you have just one that happens to pop up somewhere and you haven't done the, you know, the animal thing, like I've said. So what's your thoughts? I just throw in a heck of a bunch of peppermint shrimp, let them mow down the Aptasia. You can buy a lot of peppermint shrimp for 300 bucks, even at full retail. Yeah. <laughs> and and it, I mean, I think that's, you hit it on the head with the Valonia and the emerald crabs. A lot of people are like, oh, emerald crabs eat bubble algae. Okay, I'll get one or two. Like they're scavengers. They're going to, if there's one or two in your tank, they get to run around and eat fish waste and yeah. eat fish food and they're going to be happy. They need like, to be why hungry. Why am I going to work hard? Yeah. Yep. They, they got to eat everything else and then they're going to get hungry and then they're going to go after the hard to get stuff like Aptasia and Valonia. So the people miss that a lot. So I would, I'm with, I would go the animal route before I would go this route. Uh, and you know, we got plenty of peppermint shrimp at saltwateraquarium.com for 300 bucks. You can get it, a lot of them and knock yeah, it down. The funny thing with peppermint shrimp though, is that a lot of peppermint shrimp that are sold, aren't the ones that eat the Aptasia. And so <laughs> you have issues with that or they, 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 if you, in a smaller tank, a lot of times they'll eat each other and you know, there's all kinds of other things that happen with those. It's not a bad idea. Um, and if you have a small tank and it's a mixed wreath with not a ton of flow, you go with the, you know, the little, uh, little wormy dudes. What are those? The what the burgers, if you yeah, can find them, they're, yeah. they're hard to find. Yeah, but natural yeah. is a better way to go. Getting your hands in there, trying to get at this stuff, it's probably not worth it. And I like the I like the uh, tassellated file fish, the Aptasia eating file fish. That's my yeah, that's my go to for those. <laughs> and uh, my uh, especially quick... Majanos, they'll mow those suckers down so fast. <laughs> my uh, I have a friend, a reef buddy, who has a wall hammer coral that's twenty seven years old. Holy cow! Uh, it's actually two. He got it when his son was born. Yeah. I babysat it for a while while he was moving his tank and it recently started going downhill and he couldn't figure out why, but it was because the file fish was picking at it. So the file fish ended up dying. He got the file fish to eat the Aptasia, which it did. Then it started picking on that 27 year old wall hammer and it died. And he said, well, it got what was coming to him anyway. Good riddance. <laughs> so you're talking about file fish and yeah it's a risk. i finally lost mine recently and i had them in there for a good five six years um and those are the things wow. where you, you don't know i mean is it his lifespan did he you know did he just run out of food or you know i don't know but uh, i need to get another one in there and and the other thing too just another tip on that for people if you get one and you do have a uh, <clears throat> like a quarantine tank or, <clears throat> or whatever you can take a uh a rock out of your tank that's got some Aptasia and it starved the hell out of that dude. Stick that rock in the quarantine tank with him and get him loving, you know, the Aptasia before it even goes into your tank. And, uh, and at the same time, once you stick him in the tank, starve your tank for a couple of days, right? Your fish will be fine. Um, because if uh, he already has a lichen to pellets and stuff like that, he'll start eating those right away. But if he's already trained on the Aptasia and you dump him in the tank, he's probably going to start eating the Aptasia right away when he gets into the tank. Interesting. There you go. <clears throat> you know, and then you can train them to jump through a hoop. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we've talked about something that was done. Two things now that were done really bad. Not so great. Not so great at all. Let's flip the, let's keep this positive, Terrence. Everyone okay. likes positive stories. All right. Let's talk about two, not one, but two Red Sea products that seem to have done red sea did a very good job on them let's talk about the tank first because we'll talk about the roller mat second you gotta have a tank 
before you have a roller mat. Okay. Talk about this Red Sea. What you like so much about it? Which Red Sea tank is that? Do we have a link to that? I don't think I have a link to that. You did. It was you posted it up. Did I? You did. No, I didn't. Oh, it was not me. Oh my goodness. Uh oh. Okay. Here we go. This is why it's live. <laughs> this is why it's live. And I didn't not. Post, I did not post a link to that yet. You did. No. Oh, okay. Here we go. Here we go. Intermission. Play some music. I got. I know which one link. it is. I'm going to talk about. It. I got Jake's article on it. Is that the one you're talking about? The the new Red Sea yeah. tank, right? The Reefer you, G2. Oh, you did it. Me. You posted the link here. Oh, did I make a mistake and it's not out on the site? But I put it up yeah, and it was in the did. list. And yeah, it's it. The link reads back to itself. Okay, here we go. Oops. This is why it's live. This is why it's fun. Yes. And we're going to get this story up here and let Terrence talk about it. Because where did it go? Now you're making me where I can't find it. Here it is. Reefer, Red Sea Reefer G2. Yes. I'm texting it to you right now. Yes. Yeah, so there was away. a Reef to Rainforest story. And here I'm on. The, I'll, I'll just leave it right here. I'm on the, the Reef Builder story. I think I put up the, the Reef to Rainforest story. Either one is fine. Uh, Red Sea is continually coming out with, you know, advancements and improving their reefer tanks. Uh, it's really cool. There are things that I'm not a huge fan of in the Red Sea line, and there are things that I'd love to try out, like the reef mat, which we'll talk about in a minute. I'm not a fan of their lights. I'm not a fan of those gyre pumps. Never been a fan of gyre pumps. But I think that their tanks in general are pretty damn cool, these reefer tanks. And one of the things I had a beef with before was I didn't think they used thick enough glass. I think when you have these rimless tanks, you really need to, you know, the only thing holding these things together is a strip of silicone. So if you can increase, you know, the surface area by 25 or 30% of silicone, you're going to increase the strength. And by thickening the, the thickness of the glass, that's exactly what you're doing. And on top of that, you're going to have less bowing on the front glass, which anybody who has a four foot or up tank, all you got to do, even if it's glass, look down that, that rimless tank, it's not going to be straight. <laughs> it's not going to be straight. You can hold a straight edge on it. You can do whatever you want. Uh, so the thicker the glass is, the better, uh, because it's pushing out and it's pushing against those those seams. So they did do that. They did add, uh, you know, t you know, two outlets coming up for the tank for the bigger ones. Um, the cabinets have been reinforced on these. Uh, there's more space in the side for all of your goodies, all of your electronic goodies. Uh, it they they're, they're made for the reef mat uh, roller. Definitely overall, uh, you know, refined. Wouldn't do it with those lights, though. Okay, fine. You're going to throw it out there. I'll jump through that hoop. Why not? The First of all, the lights are single point source lights, which I hate uh, because they create shadowing. There's no way around it. So if you just draw a cone on the picture here that I have of each one of those lights, you'll see a cone that comes down and you'll see that no matter what, even after they've intersected the parts where the two cones intersect, you'll still have shadows underneath coral. And when you have a source of light that blankets the tank, whether it be a bigger panel light or a bunch of strip lights across the tank, which is a good solution as well, you don't get that problem. So that's number one. Number two, they sit way to the, you know, to the blue-violet side for my liking, right? Will they grow coral under that light? Sure. But they just, they don't, in my opinion, make the widest variety of things look good in the tank, from my preference. I mean, if you see a yellow tang under these lights, it does not look great under these lights. You're, you're bringing back, remember Pacific Sun? I think yes. they're still around. But yes. Remember Pac Sun? They, they, I don't know, maybe eight years ago. Mm -hmm. Maybe I even did it. It's a Polish thing, company, Shana, yeah. Magna. Mm -hmm. They had a light, and they're like, they apparently proved that corals don't need the white spectrum, and it was only blue. There was no white LEDs in this light fixture, yeah. period. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that lasted very long. I mean, the control on these things was miserable. Um, yeah, they, 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 they went just... through a lot of designs of that company. That was an engineering-driven company that, that just basically kept building one new product after another new product after another new product to try to see what would stick because they could build them. <laughs> But anyway, I would check out this 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 aquarium. You know, if it were me, there's not a whole lot of choices, believe it or not, in kind of uh, this you know this space. When you think about the amount of customers and everything, you, you know, you you have these guys, you have the water box guys, 
you kind of have the planet guys, but they're not, it, it's not a, a fit solution, marketed solution like, like this stuff is, this kind of ready to go kind of solution. And this is the way of the future. This is the way, uh, you know, fish stores themselves too are going to be cut out of the equation here. Not, not too far, I mean, not out, but further and further out of the equation as these things become more and more refined and, uh, and customers can, you know, just bolt things together, which is where it's going. And this is part of Red Sea's magic. Like the tank fits on the stand, the plumbing is there. You can get their lights, which works in their app. You can get their gyre pump, which works in their app. Now you have their reef mat, which yeah. works in their app as well. Yeah. So All one ecosystem. yeah, it's an ecosystem, and well, it goes beyond a a, a hardware product ecosystem because now you have all of the products that go with it too, all of the juices and the salts and the everything else. So they've got a complete, you know, A to, as they say over there, Z, uh, you know, way to take care of your tank, to buy a tank and, and have everything you need. And this reef bead app and the apps that all, and all the products that kind of connect together, granted, they don't really do these things themselves. I don't have an issue with that, but they, you know, the, the, the gyre is a max spec gyre. The lights are, uh, you know, a, 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 an OEM out of China lights and the, and then it's all, but the beauty is it's all integrated together, right? That's, that's where you give them credit is, you know, that's what makes it awesome. And the, you know, the roller mat thing is definitely where to go. Let's see here. So the roller mat, ha, you know, we, we've talked about the roller mat a few times. Uh, we won't belabor all of the different issues about it, but uh, yeah, Jake's tried it out. Jake, had a lot of good points to say about it. There's a lot of reasons to to think this one is way more innovative than the people who've been bolting acrylic together and kind of you know kind of garage kind of kind of stuff. Really, I mean, some of it really works. I mean, even the the stuff that comes out of uh, Royal Exclusive, right? It's beautiful and everything, but it's it's kind of a, a bespoke. That's the word. It's a bespoke way of doing it, right? And, uh, and the Red Sea guys look like they've really put something together. And whoever, uh, whoever put this all together for them, I mean, look at this is the, I mean, look at the, look at the product pieces that go into this, right? I mean, there's a whole slew of pieces that all had to be, uh, you know, designed to work together, molded to work together, to be able to, to, to jack in the, the roller mat material and to take it out. All of that works together. And one of the cool things in the app, and I didn't see a picture of this here, uh, but one of the cool things I saw in somebody else's site about the app is, you know, a big problem with these roller mats in the past was is that as soon as they'd fill up, right, especially the, the original thieling one, they'd fill up with water, it would just advance until the water flowed through again. And then fill up the water and then advance the flow through again. Well, the dilemma with that is, number one, you burn through a ton of material. So that's an issue. Number two, some people don't want to keep their tank that clean. I mean, ironically... A, you know, you, you might only want to advance it a quarter inch at a time. So you're not getting, you know, a full clean section every single time. And you can adjust the app in the Red Sea Reef Beat app to do that, which is very cool. When I talked to them about it, they also pointed out, I did an interview with them at Restock, uh, Reef Builder Show. They were telling that you can also check the app and you can see how much of it is advancing, yeah. how much is left. Is it advancing too much? Like, right. In the days Something's of going apps, wrong like in your tank. Something's going wrong with your tank because look, this thing is clogging up way too fast. It usually clog. I don't know if they've got this kind of of data or not, but it, it should be easily available to know that. Like, well, generally I use twenty six feet a week, right? And right now you're using forty eight feet a week on average. So I'm going to give you a heads up before you know it gets too far along <laughs> that maybe something's going wrong in your tank. Which I would only expect out of an app. I mean, it's, they're the only people who have a roller with an app. It integrates into their tanks. Um, I was very impressed by it. Like, I mean, it won't work for me because I've got a thousand gallon tank. I would have to have like three of them to get the job done with the kind of flow that I'm pushing. But for a smaller setup, and it's integrating into their products natively. I mean, if you have an older Red Sea, you have to trim the silicone, kind of cut a baffle out. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a second. Let me, let, me, um, let me interrupt you, though, because one thing I do want to say about this approach that I am not a fan of is, it, you know, this truly is, you know, some people it was it often with Neptune stuff would say, well, Neptune's got a walled garden. And I'd be like, what are you talking about? You can integrate a lot of different other companies' products, you know, with an Apex, right? 
it's part of you know my marketing approach was to try to get as much stuff as we could to connect into it. This is truly a walled garden. This really is a buy our stuff. This is going to work with our stuff. It's not working with other stuff, and that's the way it goes. I think that's a huge mistake, honestly. Um, I mean, obviously, Red Sea is a huge company. They're incredibly uh, uh, successful in what, what it is that they do. However, what better way to get people on more of your Red Sea crap, okay, than to have a great roller mat that integrates with an Apex or a Hydros? And then somebody's like, hmm, I really like how this Red Sea roller mat works. Maybe I should try that, uh, you know, that gyre pump that they have. And they try the gyre pump that they have, and it's still integrated into the Apex. And eventually they go, you know what? Both those things work in the ReefBeat app. Wow, look what they've done. They've upgraded the ReefBeat app. That thing's pretty cool. I think I'm going to start using the ReefBeat app for this and that. And then they got the next product that comes out. And pretty soon you've migrated those people over into your ecosystem. Uh, so use, use it as a discovery method. Oh, it's a, it's a Trojan horse. Absolutely. Uh, if you've got a great product, you know, you it, again, it depends on who you want to get, right? Who is the get, right? You wouldn't do this. You wouldn't make, for instance, a, um, an, an Apex or a Neptune Trident, let's say, uh, automatically work with some tiny little, uh, you know, controller company or up-and-coming controller company because you, you, your gain there isn't, isn't big, right? But if you're making, uh, you know, add-on components and you've got tens of thousands of customers on the other guy's side that you'd love to have, right, to come in and start using your app and be the one place they go, that's the Trojan horse, right? You know, give them some stuff to, to control in there and then make a couple of tweaks that you have to do, that you have to do in the app. So once in a while, you still have to go in their app and discover, like, how cool it might be. Yeah. But what do I know? So what about a Neptune Systems Trident on a Hydros? Well, that's the thing, right? So, you know, early on, that wouldn't, that wouldn't have been the thing, and it might still not be the thing, right? Because there's just not enough people to gain, right? You want to go after, you know, you want to go after. It'd be a right move for Neptune to want to get Red Sea stuff to work, right? Because there's a lot of people who want to buy that Red Sea thing, and it's going to be good for Red Sea to want to get Neptune's, you know, to have it controlled on the Neptune because it'd be great to get all of those people to want to, you know, maybe get over into their app at some point. But the Hydros thing, by comparison, is tiny compared to Red Sea and Neptune. True, you know, but you know, if 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 somebody on the Hydros line had a product that would integrate into the Apex, that would make a good sense to have it work in both the Hydros and the Apex. You think that would happen? <laughs> well, I mean, there are things that are possible without getting you know approval. You know, I, uh. you know, so there are ways to make things integrate to make you get into there. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> I'm sure for some of our viewers, though, it's good digression. They, it's interesting stuff for them, but there you go. It's, I, I mean, I have to give them a hand down for think as you pointed out, look at all those parts that they've had to machine it's and like figure out how to, big investment, big investment with software as well. This isn't something you just chunk together in your garage. I would agree that they're doing the roller mats the best at that scale. Um, it'll be interesting to see if there's, Look, ever I, a bigger one than here's the dad. thing right so let me go down the list of some of the products right so they got they got a skimmer right it's a big deal the skimmer was nothing okay they got a gyre pump okay big deal there's already gyre pumps out there they got a doser that they put together eh it's got a couple of semi interesting things but the hardware is really not awesome on the thing right so it's it's still kind of an an also ran you go down the list of a lot of the the things that they've been bringing together, which are necessary to have in the ecosystem, individually they're all they're none of them are are very uh, individually innovative or exciting until this, in my opinion. I'll give you that. I've used their gyre pumps. I would say if you're thinking about a gyre, only buy the Red Sea gyre. It's the best software integration. Period. But the roller is definitely like kaboom. Let's kick open the door on a product. Yeah, exactly. Now, putting it together in an existing tank, that's what we were starting to get on. That is where it, it, it's probably going to be interesting for people. Uh, and we talked about this when we first uh, were discussing them coming out with a roller mat and all the tanks that they already had in existence and how could it possibly work, right? Uh, but uh, I, I was thinking, well, they'll probably have some 
really good IKEA instructions and some really cool tools that they'll come out with or something. And uh, yeah, not exactly. It's not exactly what they came out with. And uh, they, they basically came out with a unsharpened box cutter which may not be a but, problem, but it's it's just it's funny because it's so simple. It's, it's I mean, but they say it works great. I asked them about they pointed that out when I interviewed them. Jake says it works great, and they're like they apparently took their warehouse guys and said cut out a baffle guys who are not necessarily aquarist, and they ever got it done. So is it so simple? Like how would you want an app for your like aquarium colors cutter? Like it doesn't have to be difficult or complicated but it works really well i agree with you i'm not i i'm not dissing it at all i just find it funny because that it is the sometimes the simplest solutions that work way better and what seems to be like a really big problem to overcome in my thought it was to try to oh shoot how are we gonna get people to get baffles out of their tanks uh something as simple as a dull box you know super flexible box cutter is the solution and if you see in this picture here where it's bent that's really where I was confused to how they're going to, you know, to get, get it to work, right? Because you have the silicone along the bottom. And it's like, how are you going to cut out that silicone along oh. the bottom, right? Yep. How are you going to get the angle correct and everything else? And it is. It's kind of like, oh, what a simple solution. I'm, I'm like, okay, that's pretty darn cool. Now, do you know what they, 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 uh, they, they charge for it? 20 bucks. <laughs> I don't know, but that's what it would be the next year, I don't know. I'm sure. I'm sure that'd be the next funny thing. Right? It'd be like, yeah, it's $20. <laughs> it's, a, it's it's 95 cents for the box cutter at uh, Harbor Freight, right? <laughs> Free if you got the coupon. <laughs> and, but, <laughs> and let's face it, you only, it only has to work for like three cuts, right? And then it's you're true. done. Like, it's true. Three sides, and then it's out, and you throw it away. Yep. They'll never use it again. Yep, 100%. Oh my gosh, simplest things sometimes. It's like I have in my mind like a, a reefer horror movie, like Friday the thirteenth. He like walks into your house with this like silicone cutter and he's like walking toward your tank, like <laughs> and you're like, no, no. The whole baffle goes <laughs> it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's somebody dirty. comes Yeah, some like like uh reef terrorist comes into a fish store, right? And he's bringing one of those <laughs> yep. in. And it's like he's gonna do it all but the last like like you know, one twentieth of an inch, right? <laughs> of silicone. <laughs> oh man. I saw this out there too. Yeah. This is one last one and then we take some questions. But uh this one just came out. Awase. Awase is the uh is kind of the pond company over in Europe. I don't know if you're familiar with them. They're a big conglomerate. They've bought up a ton of different companies, uh, but they've come out with a new power head. And again, this is this is actually 1999 is calling. They want their, their power head back. <laughs> and I'm like, what in the world were you thinking? Okay. It looks like a cannon on wheels. Again, this looks like something out of Russia, right? Like that was designed over in Russia. And then you have to have this box, okay? With with eight segment LEDs on the front to control them and the little snap on things on the side, you know, a little project box like a GHL kind of you know snap together thing. That's what and, I was thinking. Yeah, and uh, and that's how you control your power heads. And I'm like, wow, wow. Well, if they sell ten of these, it's got to be a good wow. day for them. Well, and do you know how much <laughs> all that tooling costs? Oh my and lord. That is our, our frequent Yeah, our frequent viewer Burn Squirrel says, Did Elon Musk design that pump? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. That's good. That, yeah. I mean, how much money did they spend on all that tooling to create? Well, it depends on where I they mean, did it, but if they did it in, if they did that tooling in Europe, that's gotta be a hundred grand of tooling. Okay. Easy. Easy hundred grand of tooling. If they did it, if they did it in, in China, maybe it's a third that cost or something like that. But still, uh, but still, they're never going to recoup that. There's no way. Who is going to buy that thing? I, 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 I mean, the the way it looks is one thing. Then you show me that box, and I'm like, yeah. Oh, it hurts. It yeah, hurts. Make it stop. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. You know, I try right. not to be negative, okay? I do. But, Seriously, I, mean, I try not to be negative, right? But you come along and you see it, some of these things, okay? From the reef delete to this stupid thing that's over my tank. To, it just goes on and on. What are it's you doing? It's like so out, 
It's, I mean, it, it made, maybe in a way it's a good concept. Like the, the canopy thing was a good idea and concept, but it's like, it's so the execution is so far from what would work. But dude, like, how many people oh. do you have to ask? You have to show that to like, th like three reef keepers and all three are going to say the same thing. And then do you just like put, put the earplugs in and just go, man, they must be wrong. I, I don't, that's the thing. Like, it's not a bad product in a way, but like the execution is just so like, how could you miss that? It's like, we're going to sell, you know, solid tires for off-road vehicles. Like that's, yeah, that's not a good idea. Like, duh. Oh, one <laughs> last thing to get in, Mark, uh, do go out to petadvocacy.org advocacy campaigns. Uh, we need to put this link up again, the, uh, you know, to go out and get your, um, you know, your letter in because I think that they're, they're, they've got now a, uh, a the committee. committee is formed. Yeah. A committee is formed and you can, you know, get your say in to make sure that we don't get that lost. Yes. You know? And we'll follow that this week and talk more about it. It's, it's kind of a, it is a lagging in a way type of thing because they talk about things and it leaks out of the government better or for worse. Uh, so do get those in. We'll post that up this week. Just so check back in the reef and report about that. So we can stay on top of this thing. It's not going away. As I, the guy said in the interview, uh, Bob said when I interviewed him, it's like, it's just, there'll be something else they try to sneak in. So we kudos to them for staying on top of it. And then we got to do our part and write letters, which they make it very easy to do with a form right there. Uh, to make sure that our voice is heard. Yep. It's all right there. You can literally just put your name in, date it and hit send and it's yep. done. We or recommend you, can, you do more than that. Yeah. You, super you can change it and say, you know, <clears throat> My my two my my two clowns Larry and Mo you know y y I'd never be able to get them in the future and my my daughter would cry and just add that and <laughs> when Larry and Mo dies I'll not be able to replace them you know so there you go <laughs> all right we got we got a couple questions let's get about six minutes or so just wanted to be if inclusive you have there question. Larry and Mo you know I'm, I don't know if you caught on to that or not. I, I know I'm not going there. I'm not. We're <clears throat> okay. It's a clownfish joke. I. If there's any questions from the viewing audience, <laughs> please ask them now. Yes. Yes. Any questions from any of you out there? Let, you know what? Let's hear for some of you who lurk because for as many people as we have on the stream and we have often uh, around just just approaching a hundred people on the stream, sometimes over a hundred in a few of our streams that are that are going on between Facebook and and YouTube, it'd be great to get some questions from people who usually do not weigh in. I love all of you regulars, absolutely. David Trong is out there, okay. Reef to Sea, you know, Reef Girl is out there. Burnt Squirrel, all of them are out there. Uh, Danny Chacon, uh, Antonio, all you guys are out there, and I love it. Thank you so much for, for participating. But it would be great to get some of the rest of the audience in here asking questions. And while they're trying to do that, if you, uh, if you do take a look at the top of the website, you will see the top of Reefing Report, subscribe, donate, tip us off, and the recent live stream. So if you missed a live stream, you can link there to see the rest of them. Please subscribe to the channel. Uh, we're very close to our thousand mark, uh, which would be nice. Uh, it'd be, you know, for a channel that basically just does live streams, you know, it's kind of hard for us to get as much of the subscriptions as other channels. Uh, so it'd be great if you haven't subscribed already to please do so today. And if you want to donate, that's up there. And if you have some interesting reef news, put that up, uh, you know, click that at the top and you can fill out a form and go from there. All right, so we got a couple good questions here. <clears throat> John Kidd, new 326, because the extra gallon counts, gallon tank, nice size, by the way. He says steel or wood stand. Uh, let's have fun with this, Terrence. Let's both chime in separately. So I would say first, check with the tank manufacturer, because a lot of tank manufacturers will not give you a warranty on the tank unless you put it on their stand. That being said, some tank manufacturers will give you the option of a steel or a wood stand. I like steel stands for a couple of reasons. The big one is that you do not need all that wood casing around it to create the structural strength. So you should have lots of open space. This is especially true if you're putting filtration like your sump under the tank. So the steel stand, you can then have, you can build it if you're handy or have your woodworker build doors that give you tons and tons of access under your tank. A lot of the stock wood stands have a small door like this much and they have this huge face chamber around it. So you're like trying to like crawl in a like kitty entry door 
kitty like kitty cat door into your house to try to work on your sump and it's just miserable so i would go the steel sand and then have it wrapped in wood you'll be much happier yeah so again we're talking about a 326 gallon tank which is no small tank right uh, this is now you're now entering the large aquarium size so that means that uh, 326, uh, you know, you're talking about without the, you know, without uh, the glass, which probably the glass is, I'd say, seven, eight hundred pounds if it's glass. You've got another, uh, what, 2,800 pounds of, you know, of water in there. So you're well over a ton and a half of stuff on top. Uh, it, it, although wood can be just fine and well-built wood will be just fine, just like a house. I mean, all somebody has to think about is how much weight a house is supporting on wood, right? So it's not, it's not that wood can't work. For the reasons Mark said, absolutely, steel is better. Uh, you know, wood also changes with weather, with getting wet, which will happen. Uh, the things that are used to put the wood together also can basically, over a long time, get corroded and can get corroded even much easier than they can a steel a properly powder coated steel stand can get uh, rusted through so I think there's a lot more issues with a with a wood stand uh, when you get into tanks of that size and a steel stand you know mine I, I, it's an eight foot tank and it's 400 gallons it is done with an uh, inch and a half steel and it only has you know six uprights on it I added uh, two or three more uprights just because I'm weird and just kind of jammed them in there, steel uprights, just for extra support. But it was engineered and it was fine, right? Uh, which follows through with what Mark said, which is there's just huge open areas under the tank. I mean, you, you have all the room in the world to do whatever you want. And to follow up with what Mark said in terms of putting covers over it, you can, take the, you can have a cabinet manufacturer make the cabinet panels uh, and countersink magnets into those panels and uh, and little door pulls in the side where you can just kind of reach your hand in and you can just pull them right off and you don't need hinges or anything and so you might want to have the front doors hinged but you could have the side panels just magneted on there and then you have access everywhere. There you go. There you go. Congrats on the new tank, by the way. Yeah, it's awesome. Everyone loves the new tank, but Terrence, who's not willing to go down the route of a new tank, Still not giving hope up on that. One one day that will happen uh, about the new tank. So Super Dave's driving around in a patrol car. Super Dave, I'm assuming you're some kind of first responder or policeman. If that's true, thank you for your service, uh, for what you're doing out there, putting your life on the line. As I tell you guys who are uh, in that line of work, my biggest worry in a way is that a fish or a coral dies. Your worries are you going to get shot at. Yeah, no uh, kidding. So... I did see some uh, funny thing on on the news today, though. That how they have somebody invented like a uh, a robot patrol dude that comes up to the window, like when they do a uh, when they pull over, like you deploy it like like out of the car, and it goes up to the window, and the dude is like controlling it from inside the patrol car. I'm like this is ridiculous. It's like it's got a little helmet on it, a little camera, and a little screen for the person while you're getting them a ticket. Like come on. But I don't like I don't buy this either from Super Dave. I love all of the, the the you guys too, except when you're writing me a ticket. Um, but I mean, you guys drive around all the time in patrol cars typing. All right, let's be real. There's a computer like right next to your steering wheel, and all the time I see you guys on the keyboard. So, so you can ask a question. It's all good. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I may uh, we recommend that you pull over into a safe spot and then type your question, Super Dave. <laughs> yeah, and you know what here? Tracy Spellenberg, thank you so much for saying there's 53 people in on the YouTube, nine likes. I mean, are we really that bad that you're hanging out that long and you can't smash that like button or smash that subscribe button? I mean, I mean, we don't, uh, you know, we don't try to, you know, to, to, to ask for that too much, but, you know, there we go. And now it just went up to 71, as he says there. So thank you so much. It, it all helps. And, uh, and then when we get to 1,000, you guys, you know, anybody feels like it can, can send us a little scratch, right, on the side. I love seeing those super Absolutely. chat things coming in, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You're ready. All uh, right. So Burnt Squirrel's got a question. One. Yeah, let's do that. So uh, I still, I, oh, I like the uppercase and lowercase. Yes. That in every time if you were to in. purchase a, two, a new 250 to 350-gallon tank, what manufacturer would you guys recommend? I'll just say a couple words and I'll leave it to Mark. First thing I'll say is it really depends on whether or not you're going with a traditional 
uh, size or, or shape or not, you know, like a traditional rectangle type tank. Because um, if you're not, there isn't really, you know, a, a standard off the shelf solution that you can get and you have to go to a custom builder to do it. If you're going in a standard uh, size, the new XXXXXXXXL or whatever from, uh, uh, <laughs> from Red Sea is a nice tank. It absolutely is. Whether or not it's worth the, the coin that they're asking for it, that's not for me to decide. But it is, uh, it, for, for a large tank, and I think it is around, isn't it around 300 gallons? I think so, 280, 300 gallons, somewhere in there. Um, definitely a cool tank. So other than that, you're going to have to find a custom guy. Yeah, Mark. so I will say Planet Aquarium's built all my tanks. They've been building all my tanks for, I guess, eight years now. It's been so long, I don't remember. They're the old Oceanic Builders. If any of you veterans out there, you know, if you ever called in to move an oceanic tank or you're installing an oceanic tank back in the day, you, the rule of thumb was bring another guy or girl because they're really, really helpful because they're overbuilt. So I like their products. One thing um, that I will definitely say about whatever manufacturer you recommend is if it's 250 or 350, one, go bigger than you think you need because in four or six months, it's going to feel small. And the difference price difference between the 250 and 350 sometimes is not that much more because maybe you need like one more light, but I'm going to aim for a longer tank before I'm going to aim for a taller tank. So if you're going to look at a 250, that's five feet across the front, or you can get a 350 that's eight feet across the front or even six feet, go longer. You'll be happier in the long time. In the long term, your fish will be happier too. Once I went from a five foot tank to an eight foot tank especially my tangs, they all like chilled out. They were totally different fish. So go longer before you're going to go taller. Now depth is great too, but I'm really looking for that length dimension first. I wouldn't go less than five, six is great. Eight is even better. I will say and follow up on that. I don't like any of the big tanks that are 24 inches or lower. I like a 30 inch or higher tank. Once you get into the bigger tanks, to me, the proportions just seem off. It just seems weird that you don't have that much height. And if you put corals in a 24 inch tank, your rock better be pretty low before they're growing out of the tank. Uh, and so 30 inch, you know, I think when, when Mark's talking about tall, he's like 36 and over, right? Don't go with a, you know, a 40 inch, you know, high tank in order to get there. That's four feet wide and, you know, and two feet back. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's, that's fresh a, water. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, you know, my tank's 32, you know, 32 high, 32 deep and, and, and 96, uh, the other direction. Uh, I, I think you do have to have a little bit of height once you start to get into the bigger tanks. Absolutely. Great question. Especially thanks everyone uh, for watching. Thanks everyone. The, uh, the quiet crew that came out and fired away questions. Uh, we enjoyed that. That was a good thing. Maybe we should integrate that, uh, into every week's stream, the quiet, the quiet crowd. The introverts now have to come out <clears throat> and become extroverts, at least for a split second, even if that means a decadent username, because heaven forbid your real username ask a question. We get it. It's okay. Well, it not only time. that, but, you know, it. it <clears throat> look, the only stupid question is the one you ask twice. That's what I tell people. Okay. So if you've got a question, put it out there. If somebody, you know, takes you to task on it because it sounds stupid, I'll take them to task. So, you know, put it out there. And uh, Mark and I will try to answer as best we can. And uh, if you don't want to do that in public, you can become a patron through our Patreon account and, and ask in a more private venue. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, whatever works for you, we get it. We love the questions. We love the views. We love the interactions yes. and the likes and the subscribes. Thanks, everyone, for being with us and on we love Easter doing it. Sunday. Yes. Absolutely. It's a lot of fun. Um, we appreciate everyone for being here. Be safe. Next week's Reef Palooza. Week. Oh, we didn't even talk about that. Next we, week's Reef of Palooza. Reef of Palooza. So, in Orlando, I'll be there. You'll be there. Yes. So I want to tell people in case anybody wants to uh, to hit me up and have a you know have a drink, something like that, right on the road, uh, where we're going to be. So uh, real reefing. I'm out in the RV. We're going different places. We fly out to Atlanta on Tuesday. On Wednesday, we drive down south from Atlanta to the Orlando area. We'll be hitting up uh, Top Shelf Aquatics. Uh, worldwide corals, et cetera, before we go over to the uh, the convention center uh, at the Caribe Royale for Reefa Palooza. 
And after that, we'll be heading south, uh, and I'll be on the eastern side of, uh, of Florida and heading down and seeing lots of places. So if any of you guys are in the Florida area, you know, uh, let me know. And, uh, yeah, come over, have an old-fashioned, you know. I'll probably have some of the good stuff, you know, a little barrel right there, a little 14-year-old <laughs> bourbon, you know, so good stuff. But, uh, but yeah, so this week... I'll be there. Mark will be there on Saturday. I'll be there Saturday and Sunday. Look for the big black RV if you happen to be in, you know, at the show. Hopefully, it'll did be part. Did you wrap lot. it? No, it I did not black wrap it. I saw it. Oh. oh, it's black, silver, and white. It wasn't. Well, you just said big black RV. I'm thinking it looks all more black, black, like Johnny Johnny Cash. Oh, like Johnny Cash's, black. yeah. <laughs> yeah, like it's not all black. And it's <clears> it, and on. and it may or may not have a Mini Cooper behind it. So there you go. If it doesn't, because I'm probably out driving it. Yep. <laughs> yep. And you'll see that in the video coming up, too, in Real Reefing. <laughs> ah, all right. Great. All right. There's all right, guys. the plugs. <laughs> Next Sunday, we Thanks will be on. Watching. Same time, I believe. Uh, I'll be doing it from the parking lot, probably, of the Carib Royale. Until then, thank you for joining us for another episode of the Reefing Report, and have a good one. <laughs>